Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Game Vortex. I'm Vitaly and today, all you lovely people, I wanted to share with you why should you be excited and stoked for Nintendo's next console, the elusive NX. Just a quick update, I just wanted to say that I've been feeling really under the weather. <clears throat> I was ill, so I just started to feel a bit better, so I'm getting back to making videos. In any case, also one thing I need to get off my chest is that I was one of those people who was bashing on the NX and the idea of it in the beginning, but the more I marinate on the idea, the more actually excited I'm starting to, to get. And today I wanted to tell you all the reasons why I think you should be excited about this console too, and why should you look a little bit more positive onto it. Now, let's get started, okay? I only had, well, I had a NES and SNES, and also a DS, and what else that? Uh, a Wii, obviously, but most of those consoles, are with exceptions of retro NS and, and SNES, I barely played Wii and, and DS. I just bought it for my wife, basically, so I couldn't care less about Nintendo in the last couple of years, uh, especially with all this Wii U bullshit that's been going on. In any case, what is interesting for me is that as more and more leaks happening, uh, the stories uh, coming out through... Uh, different people who are working at Foxcom and so on and so forth, it, it's becoming obvious that there is more to the NX than meets the eye. A couple of, uh, I think a year ago or so, there was a questionnaire someone IGN asking gamers what do they want from Nintendo's next console. And a lot of people, just like me at that time, were saying we just want a normal standalone HD console that can rival PS4 and Xbox. And also we want a proper controller. Now, I was agreeing with all that, but today, not today, I mean a couple of uh, months ago, I started already thinking about that. What makes people buy consoles and new hardware? What, do, what does somebody need to do to make someone come out and buy the hardware? Now, if you, all you want is an HD console, can you imagine if I have an Xbox One, and the PS4. Why the hell would I want to buy another console that would play same games plus exclusives that they release? And it, it does exactly the same thing as the two consoles that are already on the market. What's the point? How do they differ? Like, how do you like differentiate yourself from from the whole? Uh, market of, of consoles there that we have an Xbox and PS4 they're already doing that perfectly so this is where the idea for the next started to get really interesting so instead of buying yet another piece of console that can play the same bloody games as the PS4 and Xbox one you need something fundamentally different and okay it didn't really work with Wii U completely but I think they might have learned their lesson I think the Wii U was kind of a, like a stepping stone for them but what is interesting a lot of people said that the nx is going to be underpowered what gets me stoked right now is the latest leaks that's been coming out saying that the nintendo nx is running on a tegra even though everybody is uh, basically saying it's a tegra x1 actually the people uh, in foxconn specified that it's a pascal architecture which it can't be an x1 because x1 is running on maxwell architecture and why on earth would Nintendo put, let's say, a Tegra X1, which is two or three years old already, and it's totally fucking outdated? Why would they do that? Then again, it's Nintendo, Japanese company, like, you never know, they might actually do it just to trim the cost down. But I think the reason why they delayed it and waiting is because the officially Tegra X2 has not been announced yet, but it exists, it's already in some car, uh, manufacturers already using them, like, and how powerful it is, I don't know, but I've seen the unit for the car that's supposed to control all the sensors. Uh, two Tegra X2s um, basically on one motherboard produce about eight teraflops of computational power, which is a lot, a lot. That's like four PS4s uh, or two PS4 Pros for that matter. So what is interesting here, and I want you to stick with me on that one, is if it really is a Tegra X2, and even if we take the lowest possible gains that we can get, uh, X1 was the first, it was the first uh, mobile chip to produce one teraflop of computational power. Now, if one stands for something in X1, that means X2 should be very close to two. If it's actually 
even 1.5. It already puts it on par with uh, an Xbox One and close to PS4. And it's actually, if it really is two teraflops of computational power and graphics, this thing should have no problem running the same games as the PS4, including Uncharted and all that stuff. Now, of course, we're not going to get Uncharted on the NX. No, no fucking way. But then you don't have to be worried that uh, Nintendo is going to be left out again by third parties and then they'll cripple themselves eventually. Now, if uh, this is what th this is what is exciting, can you imagine the same games that you play on the TV from the same unit, you would be able to play on the go, on the screen. Now, we don't know how's that gonna work and if there's this power module supposed to be attached to that even when you're on the go. It still remains to be seen, but it's actually doing everything that the Vita was supposed to give. Like, I wanted to play those games on, on my handheld, but the Vita was far cry from from what they actually promised. It was super underpowered and and the Nintendo right now has an ideal strategy and a good striking position to actually deliver. I just, I can't like imagine, can you imagine like taking for example a Zelda, playing it on TV and just picking up a tablet, continuing the same thing without any cross saves and, and uh, reduction in textures and shit like that. For all that matters, it actually might be even better graphic on a handheld. The only thing that I'm worried about is the 7-inch or 6-inch uh, tablet that only has a 720p uh, resolution, which puts it at about 223 pixels per inch. I think a 1080p screen would have been ideal, but I understand that they also want to preserve the battery and also probably trying to make it cheap. But if you can deliver me a console that will rival in power of PS4, even a little bit, a little bit more powerful, I would happily pay four or five hundred bucks for it and if, if it's everything that there is if it's a hybrid that it can actually do this on on the tv and i can take it with me this is super super exciting and that would put it in a position of not being left out by big publishers on the games because you might also say oh come on like it's like the, the current consoles are on the x86 architecture and Tegra is basically an ARM chip. But so the porting of the games will be difficult. But that's not true because in, during the last press conference, uh, what was that? X1 was announced, Tegra X1. NVIDIA actually came out and said that they actually developed this, this, this processor in such a way. And they also give the developers the tools to easily port the computer games that are running on x86. Uh, onto the Tegra X1 and that mobile chip really has some potential really has some potential so if they deliver on everything that they're promising it's gonna be amazing I think that it's gonna be amazing it's something you should be excited for because trust yourself like why the hell would you need another console that can play exactly the same games that you play on your PS4 and Xbox One you just need more space to put another thing in there and Yes, you would get a Nintendo exclusive, but is it worth really? I mean, if, if Nintendo cared only about selling their exclusive games on their console, why the hell would they invest like hundreds of millions most likely into the R&D and marketing this, this console day and X? If they could just like start releasing games on other platforms and that's it. They could make more money on that and save a lot of money on the research and development, which I think is still possible that it might happen in the future. If the NX fails, if it really comes out to be ridiculously underpowered and, and most of the developers will abandon it quickly like they did, Electronic Arts did with the Wii U, then Nintendo is fucked because they have no chance to, to try it again. If it doesn't work twice in a row, you know, that's it. That's it. That's the game over for them. Then they'll have to quit the hardware market and just start selling software like everyone wants them to. But I know they are stubborn Japanese corporations, so of course it's going to be difficult. Now, I'm, a couple of skepticism here, points that I wanted to add is that first I mentioned the screen, right? It remains to be seen what kind of internal storage does it have. Uh, and also, for fucking sake, Nintendo, please make online work properly. All the transferring things and, and so on and so forth. I also heard that the NX is going to be compatible, backwards compatible, not only with the games from Wii and other things. It's actually going to be able to accept the cartridges from uh, the 3DS and so on. That would be perfect. If there's a virtual console there too, 
even better i would love to play now the build quality and because of the way this thing sounds like it's designed is, is my main concern now i'm not really a fan of nintendo's build quality in general like i have the 3ds that i borrowed from my friend before i didn't really like it because it felt kind of plasticky and flimsy and and you know like it just didn't feel like it, it it's it's designed like a, a good quality piece of product also the positions of the triggers and, and and other things that they got on my nerves obviously the quality of the screen that remains to be seen screens were never really a big part of nintendo it's like vita yeah that, that's 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 probably the best uh, screen you can find on a portable handheld but nintendo still has a chance to redeem themselves so this is the main couple of reasons why I wanted to tell you why should you be excited about this. I can imagine like, even though if we take it like, I don't know how big the whole unit is going to be including the dock and stuff, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be much more comfortable, convenient to fucking go and just take this thing and bring it to your friends and play it because you already have a controller and everything else with it. Like I'm traveling to Bangkok and I'm really trying to finish some games with my friend who doesn't have a console at the moment. And I don't really want to bring my PS4 because it's big, it's big and you need controllers and the cables and all that stuff. Whereas I think with the NX you'll be able to just drop it there. Or even like on the train journey, like I have a bus, like we have a VIP buses here that are actually traveling, they have power plugs. You could just put it there and just play it on the screen in that dock. That would have been flipping amazing. That, that I, and you don't have to sacrifice the power for port portability basically. So I hope that you guys are as well are excited. There's also a lot of promise with it being portable uh, that the mobile games like Pokemon and other stuff will come there as well. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're going to uh, utilize itself. As long as the build quality is good, that it doesn't feel like this controller and the whole unit is going to fall apart. Because you know that if the controllers are attached on the sides, constantly taking them off, putting back on, eventually I think the hinges or whatever the hell that is a magnets uh, eventually that I think will will be a, will break or something like that. So what I wanted to know is that are you guys excited about Nintendo NX? I'm still hoping that they can unveil this console now within the next month I'd say or two because it's getting too late. You're, they're releasing it uh, in what March and you know that like you can't just like come out and show the console like they did with Wii U and then just start selling it without properly explaining. They have to keep the momentum going, they have to announce it, they have to convince people, they have to keep momentum going and the hype going all the way through March because you need to manufacturing and probably doing that already, marketing all this stuff. Because if you do that all in one month, you're gonna fail again Nintendo. And you really, really, really need to succeed this time because we want competition. We want this market to be healthy. And if Nintendo's track record of having one success and one failure, one success and one failure with the consoles is right, the Nintendo NX should be a success. And that might also provoke Microsoft or Sony to make other handhelds as well or hybrids and to be honest we would all like to see more handhelds on the market I think eventually people will stop caring about mobile gaming and actually go out and start playing games on the handhelds again it will be the rebirth of handheld gaming again which I hope will happen god I miss those days when I had a PSP it was amazing so thank you very much for watching my dear listeners and I hope to see you on the next episode of Game Vortex. There's a lot of nice exciting things that are coming out and don't forget please support me, subscribe to this channel, click the like button, share the video, leave the comments below, let me know what are you stoked about and are you going to buy the next when it comes out. So thank you very much again and I'll see you on the next episode of Game Vortex.